Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, do you mind if I ask you about when you visited churches when you were 13 to 15? Yeah. Did you just go by yourself? I did go by myself, yeah. Um, the first times I went with my grandparents and my parents, and then I lived very close to a church in my in my uh, area after I moved out of my grandparents' house. And we were skateboarding there at age 13, and then we would go there for the free food. That's where my, why my friends went there. Um, and then I would study, and then it was when I saw that... Uh, the churches had different teachings between even minor sec sects of Christianity uh, would differ in their teachings. So that's what first started to get me excited about learning more about the Bible itself to see which one of them was right. And then it turned out that you can't really say any of them are uh, because of the problems with the book itself, with the Bible itself. Were you living independently when you were 13? No, I was not. I was not living independently. I was living independently when I was 16. Yeah, but not 13. No, I lived with my father when I was 13. Yeah? Um, I don't know if you already covered this, mm -hmm. but uh, where are you from? And I ask just because like, if you live in like, a very religious area, if you live kind of in a... A lot of a lot of people in my position would would have that exact thing. A lot of people I know anyway who are uh, atheists or secular activists are from the Bible Belt, um, and that's why they have such a strong reaction toward a religion and Christianity in this case. Um, I'm actually from Sacramento, Northern California. Not very. I mean, it's. I'm sure it's more religious than some cities, but it's not intense at all. Uh, my grandparents are from Oklahoma, so that explains that. But they're not from they're not from Sacramento, so that's where I grew up. Um, and not a lot of people I knew were even were even interested in religion uh, as a kid, at least. I seem to be the only one. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Do you discuss the, the um, discrepancies between the Old and New Testament, or do you focus within each testament how it's contradicting? I do talk about both. Um, a lot of it is the Old Testament, just because there's more there to go through. Um, but there are some really good instances within the, the New Testament uh, as well, especially where uh, Jesus says that he doesn't bring peace, but he brings a sword. That's one of my favorite quotes from the New Testament that I like to bring up as well. Um, and the, the women not speaking in church is also a New Testament. Uh, but I, I went through it all, and I picked the most relevant, and I tried to pick some of the lesser-known quotes just because a lot of this stuff has, has been covered. So I picked things that I thought that if people don't already know, that they should. Yeah. Uh, do you focus only on <clears throat> disproving, I guess, the core concepts of Christianity, or do you seek also to disprove, or I don't want to say frown upon because that's too strong, mm -hmm. some of the different ideas that have stemmed from religion, religious belief, like uh, the stigmatization of gays or um, the killing of abortion doctors, for example? I actually talk a lot about that, um, specifically because it finds its roots in the Bible. So I'll, I talk about the... Uh, quote in the Old Testament where if a man is to lie with another man it's an abomination um, and how so much of our lives today are centered around that one quote in this one book from this many years ago and how ridiculous that is um, but it's become it's gotten to a place where people who are Christians and consider themselves good people and loving people will discriminate against other people and say it's what the Lord wants. And when it gets to be that bad, you have to think about maybe these ancient texts that we're reading need to be updated a little bit to include uh, what we believe today as opposed to what they believed back then, uh, which like, the earth is flat would be a good example as well. <laughs> yeah? Would you say your major influences were, do you go old school with Bertrand Russell or are you more of a Hitchens fan? Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine is my is my is my best. Um, he I have read pretty much everything by Thomas Paine and I love it. And he goes back and forth on whether or not he is an atheist or not. But I, I do agree with most of his ideas, which include uh, secular uh, removing religion from at least society. Um, Benjamin Franklin he's not an atheist. He was a deist, but I, he's a big. I'm a big fan of his as well. So not very contemporary. I don't read a lot of Sam Harris or Chris Hitchens or uh, Richard Dawkins or anything like that. But I have read them. I just, it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. Do you touch upon at all the non-originality of the Bible and how so many uh, facets of Christianity are seemingly in a ton of other religions? You know, for example, a lot of things about the Christ 
match a lot of other minor deities or even major deities major in deities. older religions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't talk about that in this book specifically, but on my website I have a bunch of articles and essays going specifically towards that. Um, I do talk about uh, Christmas and how Christmas came to be and uh, how it's actually a pagan holiday and Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. In case any of you didn't know, Jesus was not born on December 25th. That's a fact. <laughs> so so that's, that's it. That's all you need to know. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, things like that, just minor things like that bothered me, and I, so I wrote essays on that, and that'll probably go into the next edition of Disproving Christianity, but it didn't make it into this one because I wanted it to be as small as possible, so the next one will be maybe 196 pages. Anyone else? Yeah. You expressed some interest in writing on uh, the creationism debate. Mm -hmm. how, how do you plan to attack that with a, with a religious studies background? Um, I actually, that's funny that you mentioned that. That was the hardest part of this book for me was addressing the um, the creation of the earth argument. Uh, as I, obviously, that's a key to disproving Christianity. You need to disprove the fact that that the earth is six thousand years old, six thousand plus years old, um, which I had to do. I had to take a few classes and I had to do some research on my own time, which wasn't very fun for me, being not from the sciences. Uh, but there's maybe one page in the book about that where I get pretty much everything right. Um, that's an area where there's some typos too, but it's uh, I, it, that was probably the most difficult part. So I think for next time I'll find a partner in crime who specializes in that area to give a guest chapter, maybe. Anyone else? Yeah. Sorry, I keep asking questions. Do Ask away. Talk, do you talk at all about mistranslations in the Bibles or um, just misinterpretations of what was said? I've read several articles, you know, from even theologians who have said that a lot of, um, you know, the text in the new, uh, in the King James Bible or uh, the New International Bible is really a very poor translations of the original writings. There are a lot of instances, and well-known, well-documented instances, where words could mean one thing in the Greek or Hebrew, and then when they're translated, they, they do change meaning in, in that sentence and in that context. I don't talk about it in the book, but that's a huge issue. Um, but that's to be expected when you're changing the Bible. It says don't remove or add from this book, but you're changing it by King James changed it. Everybody's put their uh, added touches onto the Bible, which apparently is not supposed to be done, but that does create a huge problem with interpreting. Then anybody can say it means whatever they want, and it becomes diff my job becomes difficult because then I can read you a quote um, where who was Joseph's father because in one part it says, um, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, who was born to Jesus, who he called Christ. And then another part it says that he was the son of Heli, so, or Heli, I don't know how to pronounce that. But um, I brought that point up specifically because you mm -hmm. were talking about the difficulty of um, attacking the creation myth using only theological points. And I had read an article about um, a famous Hebrew scholar who after reading many texts from the era of the early Hebrew Bibles, had come to the conclusion that the original, you know, some of the first lines in Genesis where God created the heavens and the earth was actually a mistranslation and that according to what she had studied was really God had separated the heavens from the earth and the land from the water and that that could change completely the... Yeah, the meaning of Genesis and the Bible as a whole. I have heard that as well. I've heard that argument before. Um, I don't think that it sees any merit in the religious studies world right now, just because um, any professor that I've spoken to um, at UCSB and at other colleges, they'll say that something like that is unlikely. Um, there are a lot of a lot of ways you can translate certain words, but sometimes people will stretch yeah. to find certain things like that in order to make the book work, which I've found many times uh, when debating people is um, actually a really good example is in a hate mail letter that I got.